Throughout history, Thomas Jefferson's metaphor illustrating a wall of separation between church and state has been applied to various aspects of society, often pertaining to the education of our youth. Questions concerning religion's place in American public education date back to the very establishment of the country's education system and remain prevalent today. McCollum v. Board of Education, the pivotal Supreme Court case initiated in Champaign, Illinois in 1948, brought forth questions regarding the constitutionality of religious influence in public schools, prohibiting explicit religious education and initiating a multitude of court cases and decisions which, over time, mitigated religion's presence in the public education system. The McCollum case helped set the precedent for later decisions which aided in the development of the legal framework surrounding the constitutional limit to religion's presence in public education. The common school movement of the 1830s and 1840s brought forth conflict over religion's proper place in the newly established, government-run public education system. Upon initiation, the institution reflected a fundamental societal assumption that common morality and spirituality were central to education. Yet disputes took shape over the extent of theological doctrine's role in the curriculum. It was eventually concluded during this period that the concept of the common school should be upheld in public education, a concept introduced by Horace Mann in Massachusetts. Under this fundamental system of education, no doctrine would be explicitly taught, ecclesiastical control would not take hold, yet the common school's teachings would draw from fundamental Christian morality. Thus, Protestant morals were stressed throughout the curriculum in 19th century public schooling. Thought to be culturally appropriate, this underlying moral instruction was hardly questioned. It was Gary, Indiana, which first established the concept of released time religious education in 1914, dismissing students from regular school activities for church or synagogue provided religious instruction. By pioneering this practice, Gary made a critical advance in providing the public school with the right to direct religious education, this practice being carried to other schools and often observed on school property. From this, a pivotal debate was born. As released time religious instruction was brought to public school property, the practice was challenged in Champaign, Illinois in 1948. Vashti McCullum, the mother of a child enrolled in the Champaign Public School District, objected to the practice on the basis that her son, James, was ostracized for not attending the religious classes provided by the release time program at his school. Release time religious classes were, at the time, provided in Champaign by the Champaign Council on Religious Education, offering voluntary classes for public school students from grades 4 to 9, provided by clergy and lay members from multiple denominations and offered to Jews, Catholics, and Protestants, these weekly religious classes were 30 and 45 minutes in length. Aggravated at school officials' refusal to acknowledge her complaints, McCollum, an affirmed atheist, sued the school board in July of 1945, claiming that the in-school release time program violated the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, the basis for the separation of church and state. She also stated that religious classes violated the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment, asserting that the council's claim that participation was voluntary was merely a facade. Participation, she claimed, was pressured by school officials. It is an expression of majority culture in Champaign-Urbana and stirs up um, a protest from uh, this good family. In January of 1946, Champaign County Circuit Court ruled in favor of the school district and the Illinois Supreme Court affirmed this ruling. McCollum, resolved not to abandon her cause, appealed the case to the U.S. Supreme Court, which agreed to hear the case in December 1947. On March 8, 1948, the Supreme Court ruled 8-1 to one in favor of McCollum, and the classes were ruled unconstitutional. Justice Hugo Black, writing the majority opinion, claimed that this release time program constituted the use of tax-supported property for religious instruction and the close cooperation of the school authorities and the religious council in promoting religious instruction. Supporting McCollum's original claims, Justice Black held that the program violated the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. McCollum versus the Board of Education is a case in which especially um, Justice Hugo Black leads an argument um, for the application of the 14th Amendment in ways that had not been used um, for, uh, uh, for in the previous history of the court. 
A wide variety of responses to the McCullum case were provoked by the court's final decision. About two-thirds of law reviews opposed the decision, most stressing the principle that our founding fathers believed in freedom of religion, not freedom from religion. Others claimed that the court had interfered with the state function, misconstruing the implications of the First Amendment. Religion, they feared, would face destruction if it were not rooted in the hearts of young people. John Courtney Murray argued that total separation damaged freedom of religion and parental rights, as well as being unsupported by historical, political, or legal evidence, or by principles of religious or social morality. Favorable reviews, however, claim that the court's ruling eradicated an evidently unconstitutional practice, upholding religious freedom and the principles of the First Amendment. Thomas Jefferson's famous metaphor regarding the wall of separation between church and state was considered by these supporters of the court's decision, a clear indication that the release time program had been unconstitutional and the court's ruling thus necessary and justified. This case um, is uh, a case which is one case among many, or a kind of uh, uh, a set of stepping stones through history um, by which um, American culture is seeking to clarify some significant values. Unfavorable opinions provoked by the court's ruling forecasted a vital decision which followed McCollum versus Board of Education, a case by the name of Zorak versus Clausen. Due to the Supreme Court's decision to outlaw release time programs, New York City began the Dismissed Time program in which students, upon parental approval, would be dismissed from school property so as to receive religious instruction at various religious centers. Those without parental consent would remain in school classrooms. Challenged in the Supreme Court in 1952, the practice was ruled constitutional on the basis that it involved neither religious instruction in public school classrooms nor the expenditure of public funds. This decision, brought on by the complaints of appellants whose children attended the city's public schools, addressed the recurring issue regarding the use of taxpayer funds on religious instruction in public education. The Zorak ruling, Justice Douglas asserted, differed from the McCollum case because religious exercise remained off school grounds. Entrance into the program remained entirely voluntary. Thus, the court's ruling, which resolved the central argument over the use of taxpayer funds on religious teachings, was critical to the establishment of sufficient constitutional boundaries for religion in the public school system. The majority of responses were favorable, a drastic improvement from those which followed the McCollum case. Because there was little backlash, the case's ruling was upheld without opposition. Its ruling remains in practice to this day. There are now approximately 1,000 release time programs in existence, with over 250,000 students enrolled. The McCullum case was thus mandatory to the alteration of such religious programs, so as to allow them to be constitutionally acceptable. In the years that followed, a variety of related lawsuits sprung up all across the country. One famously known court case by the name of Engel v. Vital occurred in New York in 1962 and resulted in the monumental decision which asserted that it is unconstitutional for state officials to create an official school prayer and require its daily recitation in public schools. Abington v. Shemp, taking place in Pennsylvania the next year, expanded upon this ruling by determining that Bible readings in public schools are unconstitutional, while Lee v. Weissman, occurring in Rhode Island in 1992, further limited the presence of prayer. McCollum v. Board of Education, taking place in Champaign, Illinois in 1948, marked the beginning of a series of lawsuits surrounding the issue of religion in the public school system. These decisions developed the current day guidelines for religion's limitation in government-funded schooling, diplomatically resolving a series of debates concerning the extent to which Thomas Jefferson's wall of separation should be applied to public education. These court decisions were essential to the secularization of American public schools. Despite the establishment of such regulations, the debate lives on. Within the last decade, controversies over issues such as the instruction of evolution, the mention of God in the Pledge of Allegiance, and moments of silence have been widespread, continuing what the McCullum case so long ago initiated. <laughs>